This is Boomer Life on Sea Isle 650. Lisa, Welcome back. This is Boomer Life on CL650. I'm Joanne Sutton. And our conversation today is all about Alzheimer's disease and other dementias. Our guests are from the Alzheimer's Society of BC. We have CEO Maria Howard joining us in the studio today. And right now, we'd like to say hello to Paul Blanchett from Kamloops. He's on the phone. Hi, Paul. Hi. Happy New Year to you. Well, thanks very much, and same to you. <laughs> Thank you. Well, Paul, it's wonderful to have you joining us today. And we usually start off um, this segment by asking people about their personal connections to dementia. So if you could maybe just tell us a little bit about yourself and your personal connection. Yeah, absolutely. Um, first of all, I'm, I'm a professional engineer. My family's uh, grown up and we worked across North America, came back home to uh, Kamloops about 12 years ago to our hometown to grow up with family and to raise our children here. Um, and uh, in the past uh, four years, our life has changed direction and gone down a journey of, of uh, dementia, Alzheimer's, with my wife Linda being diagnosed um, almost four, oh, just about four years ago right now. And so, you know, it's, uh, it's a new path that we're on. Let me just put it that way. My part is uh, I'm primary caregiver. Uh, I still work, uh, and um, I am working mostly from home now. But I am caring for Linda as uh, we go down this journey. Uh, did Linda have a professional career? Yes, Linda uh, was. Uh, she's got a degree from UBC, and uh, she, when we uh, when we moved, took up a real estate business. She had that in Vancouver, and when we moved to Campbell, she took that up here and and was quite successful in her business here. So uh, she's that, and she's uh, quite an independent person, an uh, excellent skier, got her pilot's license when she was young, so an out-there person. So Paul, do you mind telling us how old you both are? Not at all. Uh, I am a young 61, <laughs> <laughs> and Linda is uh, just uh, 60 this year. And um, we, we found uh, out about this when Linda was uh, 56, so uh, diagnosed at a younger age for sure. So maybe you could talk a little bit about that and what the experience was like when you received that diagnosis for Linda. Absolutely. Uh, what I'll do is give you a little bit of a flavor for the uh, couple of years prior because things were happening and we weren't, weren't aware of exactly what it was. But over the couple of years prior, Linda's business um, actually started slowing down. It was not as successful. She, she wasn't earning the money that she had then. Um, so just from a business perspective, that started slowing down. She had a couple of car accidents, uh, especially uh, one uh, very close to the diagnosis. And this was unlike Linda, uh, that she she had these accidents. And, and the situation around the accident was quite strange. She was anxi- she had anxiety um, through a couple of years prior. Now, at her age, we were going, oh, well, this is most likely menopause. So as these symptoms were coming up, we were going to our doctor, obviously, and uh, and going through the treatments for these typical, these typical systems, uh, symptoms of other things. So that was what it was as we were going along the path. And, um, and then we started taking some, Linda started taking some tests for cognitive ability uh, with our doctor. And that was, you know, those, those tests, we were still trying to find out what was going on. I at that time, and we at that time had no idea at all that, that where this might go as far as a, uh, as far as a diagnosis was going. Uh, so these the symptoms and the treatments didn't really help. Uh, the behavior was pretty much the same, and by the process of elimination, we ended up having Melinda and myself going to a neurologist here in town. So that was where the serious diagnosis started happening, and Linda had more tests, um, MRI and other scans, and uh, more, more diagnosis, and then we were referred to a UBC clinic uh, for Alzheimer's, uh, which ended up being about six months later. But we pretty much, uh, through that uh, process of going with the neurologist and with the doctor, uh, we were diagnosed with dementia um, early in uh, 2012. So it was it was kind of going down the path. And the final diagnosis came to me as a shock. We were in at the doctor's reviewing, reviewing uh, the results. And uh, the doctor said, Paul, give me a call when you get home. And we, I called them and wasn't really sure what it was. Like. It was about something. 
But that's when I got the diagnosis of this Lynn had Alzheimer's. And it was a complete shock. And more of a shock is because I, like most people, don't fully understand what dementia slash Alzheimer's is. And so immediately we dug into, okay, what does this really mean? So it was kind of a buildup, um, focused, uh, focused uh, knocking things off. And it's not this, not that. And then more serious um, tests, and then there you go, right mm-hmm. in front of us. It's almost like a process of elimination. So uh, obviously, when you painted the picture that you weren't expecting this at all, uh, it would have taken the wind completely out of your sails. And all of a sudden, you, you're you're staring at each other, knowing that your your life now is going to change forever. Things are going to be a lot different. So what well, did? You, sorry, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Nope. No, exactly, and the, the other part of it is we didn't know what different meant. <laughs> we didn't. We didn't really know what the journey even looked like. I mean, we had not spent any time looking into this uh, at all. I mean, we certainly had friends and elder. You know, Linda's dad had dementia later, much, much later in his life, so we had a very high level of understanding. So we didn't know what this journey meant. Uh, and you have a clearer picture of that now, four years oh, down yeah. the road. <laughs> much, much clearer picture of it now, uh, for sure. So, Paul, can you um, tell us how you made a connection with the Alzheimer's Society of BC? At, at what point did you reach out to them? Well, this happened very close to uh, the diagnosis. The neighborhood that Linda and I lived in, we, we had a couple of uh, our friends, our neighbors were doctors in Kamloops. It's a smaller town, and one of the doctors is a neurologist, and and uh, the diagnosis was there. And, and uh, you know, they obviously shared that professional information. And one of our close friends uh, who knew us, one of our neighbors, reached out right away. He uh, was involved in uh, the uh, he's, he's a senior manager at, um, at uh, the uh, investors group. And already through the walk, they had a very close relationship with the with the um, Alzheimer's Society of BC. So he already knew people in town because of their relationship. He reached out immediately and and we had a chat. And he said, Paul, you have got to go and talk to the folks at uh, Alzheimer's Society and, and, and have a chat and reach out for help and information. And me, I'm the kind of person that uh, I'm an engineer by training. I, I need to have information. And I said, absolutely. And within a week of diagnosis, I was uh, meeting with um, Tara here uh, and uh, and getting getting involved in learning. So that's that's how we were introduced, and it was that very direct relationship through people in town who cared about us and knew something about Alzheimer's. So could you just paint us a little bit of a picture now? Maybe um, talk about some of the challenges that you've experienced since you received that diagnosis. Is there any stories that you could share? Yeah, there are a few. I'll try not to be, be too too much here. But, you know, I think the first thing was us working through the reality of, of what it meant and then sharing it with our children. Uh, my daughter would then be, I think, um, she'd have been 16, uh, my son 19, both living at home. And so, you know, they had no idea what it was other than as we shared it with them, uh, our journey is quite different and mom is on a path uh, on a disease that uh, is terminal, period. And we don't know how long, we don't know what it's going to look like, but we are here right now. And so that, just working through that, the reality, and to learn and understand what the journey might be, was really the first part of, of the challenge that we had. Linda's been very independent. Right away, she lost her driver's license. Uh, the the doctor said that uh, she should not be driving, so that went away right away. Um also, Linda had just uh, retired from her business because of the the disease, which we can now look back on. Uh, she was not doing well in the, in the business. We said, well, let's stop that. So she had just um, resigned, uh, retired from the business a few months prior to the um, to all that. So, so that's a change on the financial side for us. Um, as we went down the next few months and a year or so, um, we realized we had to sell our family home. Uh, we had a larger home, three levels, and... One of the things that affected Linda and affects Linda is her ability to move and uh, cognitively walk and control her her body. And so she couldn't go up and down stairs very well. So we had to move homes in the middle of all of this, changing what was uh, 
who was friendly and recognizable to something new. Uh, travel and this ability to travel has gone away. Uh, over the time, I have had, as a primary caregiver, I've had the blessing of working with my company. Uh, they've helped me immensely. And I'm working a much uh, shorter day, a full day, but uh, in a small technology company, we work a lot. And my time now is I, I work from home mostly, and um, I'm able to help Linda out. So she needs help now every hour or so for a bit, and you know, cooking and everything else with that. So I'm, my, my life has, has changed uh, a fair bit. Um, children living abroad, they've had guilt about living abroad, wanting to help, but can't. Should I be at home, yes or no? So, you know, these are some of the things. Uh, carving out time for me is important. I know that, but it's still difficult to do. So at the end of the day, you know, Linda's disease is, is progressing. We've had to go from her memory working somewhat to now only in the moment. And so we enjoy the moment a whole lot more than, than a lot of the short-term memories. So there, there's a higher level uh, part of the challenges. Uh, and, and one last thing, too, is just working, working within the healthcare system. And our situation is a little bit different, but the healthcare system is not geared well for, for dementias. Uh, and I'm saying that living in Kamloops, uh, and we've had a, you know, essentially a rotating door of, of helpers, and they have varying understanding of, of dementia and Alzheimer's. And so that's been part of the challenge is working through the healthcare system. There's a bunch of stuff for you. <laughs> oh, that, you've painted an excellent picture, Paul. I also understand that you're, you're both advocates for the society. Can you talk a little bit about uh, some of the work you do to help others that are living with the disease? Yeah, absolutely. You know, this you can tell that I'm I'm relatively outspoken here. I'm Linda and I have been outgoing people our entire lives. Uh, we love people. Uh we're comfortable with others speaking out. My my work has certainly been out there and Linda's work in real estate and the, all she has done, we've been out in front of people. And this was not really a it wasn't really a decision. We just started doing it um as a matter of course because we knew we could. You know, so many people the educational part of, of this and educating all of the stakeholders, we'll talk a little bit about that later, but so many people know only a fraction of, of what this means. And from our perspective, from my perspective, Linda and I decided right away we would do all we can to engage in helping because we're not afraid to talk about it, not, neither of us. Now, Linda knows what the disease is and what it's doing to her, but we're not afraid to talk about it. And, you know, sometimes these are blunt discussions. You know, this disease, Linda will die. There's no cure. And that's the path we're on, and her, she'll eventually die from disease because she, she can't control anything anymore. That's reality, and a lot of people don't know that. So given our ease of, of working with people, and our, our, you know, we, just, we didn't make a decision so much as just started doing it. So that's, that's kind of how we got involved. Uh, Linda and our family was selected as the honorary family in 2014, uh, for the for the walk, and we did a lot of fundraising, and we, we through that, we, we were doing radio interviews, TV interviews, um, just talking about the whole the whole thing and the whole uh, issue of Alzheimer's and all the things going on in our experience. So we started doing that. We spoke to Rotary groups, we spoke to local businesses, um, we had uh, a couple of TV interviews. So we we did as much as we could from within Kamloops. And um, also, um, the family, you know, we we do know Terry Lake. Linda worked with him um, on his campaign, and uh, and our kids worked with the liberal movement here earlier. So we were at least uh, friends, loose friends. Linda were better friends with Terry. And so we we were able to just chat with him and, and, um, and talk to him about it as, as friends, not just him as a minister of health. And so... You know, through that, uh, our, our family, first Monique, went and spoke uh, at the legislature to the MLAs. She went there a year before us. She was, I think, 16 or 17, Maria, I think it's something like that. Yeah, about that. And, um, and uh, she felt passionately about helping as well. And so she went and spoke. Linda and I had already booked a trip to Hawaii then. And so we, we decided we would just continue with that. About both Linda and I did speak the year later and spoke to the MLAs in support, and Linda shared some of her story, and we shared some of our story. So, you know, I think that I know that our, our relationship with Terry um, and then also with Todd Stone, who's the Minister of Transportation, who was my ex-business partner, um, just those friendships uh, allowed us to have a more open door to speak to the provincial government. So we were really happy to be able to do that.
Well, I can tell it you're in it for Alzheimer's, that's for sure, the both of you. And, and just keep doing what you're doing, Paul. And thanks very much for sharing your story with us today. My pleasure. My pleasure indeed. And, you know, if, if I may have a final word here, I think the key thing here is that we continue to support the Alzheimer's Society of BC. They, they have been the glue pulling together all the stakeholders, local government, uh, fed, or provincial government, and even the federal government. We have to work together. And, and that includes the, the uh, caregivers themselves. We have to bring these people together to be able to move more quickly. And we still need money. So all the best on that, Maria. I'll be doing what I can to help. And <laughs> thanks. And thanks. Paul. Uh, I appreciate the time here as well. Thanks, Paul. All the best for this new year for 2017. Thanks very much. Bye for now. Up next on the show, we're going to meet the MLA for Abbotsford, who is also the Parliamentary Secretary for Seniors, and we'll learn more about dementia policies in this province. That conversation is next on CL650. Celebrating the Boomer Lifestyle. This is Boomer Life on CL650.